Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Geometry Nodes in 3.0. Today, I'll be teaching you how to make this kind of sun ray effect using just a plane and some geometry nodes, and shader nodes of course. So without further ado, let's get started. First let's hide the old mesh and add in a new plane. This will be the basis for the entire effect. So let's start off with making a new material. And this material will be an emission shader and a transparent shader. Let's add in a mix shader right here. Make sure the transparent's on the top and the emission is on the bottom. Now, what we are going to do is add in our UV map. And this is so that we can make our gradient. As we can see, we have the red gradient and the green gradient. Those are the X and Y gradients. So let's go and add in a separate XYZ node. And what we're going to do now is uh, make our light ray gradient. So to do that, we have this, and let's add in a color ramp to the x-axis right here. And let's add in another node, switch this to black, and then switch this to B-spline. This makes the interpolation much more gradual, which is what we want. Next, what we want to do is scale this end down to like 0.1 so that it looks more like a light ray. Actually, we could go even smaller. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Now what we want to do is make the edges fade off, like this. So to do that, let's add in another color ramp, this time on the y-axis. And as we see here, we're starting to get a little bit of an issue if we do something like this. This is because with the way planes are triangulated, it's not quite right. So to fix this little issue where we have a gradient here but not here, we just add, need to add in a few loop cuts using Control r I'm just going to do three right here. As we can see, it's being kind of fixed, but still kind of buggy. So to fix that, let's add in about four or five in this direction. As we can see, that's pretty good. Still a few errors, but we'll work with what we got. Okay, now that we have this, let's start combining these two. Let's use a multiply node right here. Multiply those two together. As we can see, that's a fairly good gradient. But we could go a little bit further if we set this to ease and then add in another white node right here or point and then a darker one in the middle to make it look more like a light ray. That seems pretty good. And now what we can do is plug this, make sure this is clamped or else I could add in some shading errors. Let's add this into the mix shader. Okay, as we can see, there's a little bit of an issue. It all turned white. That's because, since we are in the Eevee render engine, we forgot or haven't put in the alpha blend mode yet. So just switch from opaque to alpha blend, and switch the shadow mode to none. There we go, that seems pretty good. And now, if we change the color and stuff like that, and maybe turn up the emission, we have our light ray. So let's turn this to more of a yellow color. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Now let's move this over, or let's scale it up on this axis by like two. That seems pretty good. And we can move it so that the origin, there's the origin right there, is right where the beginning of the light ray is. That'll become important later on. Okay, now that we have one light ray, we could turn it into many. So let's go into the geometry node editor. And what we're going to do is add in an instance on points node so that we could duplicate this uh, light ray. So let's go to instances, instance on points. We want to hook this up into the instance, the original geometry, into the instance tab. And then what we want to do next is hook up the mesh line into the points. So this basically tells us how many duplicates we have. And if we hook this up into the end, we can see we have 10 duplicates all stacked up on top of each other. We don't want them to be offset by one meter each time, so let's set this to zero. And what we're going to do next is add in a random value node. Random value node. There we go. Set this to vector. And if we plug this into the rotation, we can see, if we turn this up, these are rotating in every which direction, which is exactly what we want. Let's set this to maybe a negative, more like that. And now since we have this, let's go and start uh, animating this. So the way I found to animate this the best is to add in a Rotate Euler node. Let's see, Utilities, Rotate Euler. There we go. And if we have this and set it to Local, 
and change this to axis angle, we can make it so that it only rotates in this direction locally to the previous rotation as set up by here. That just makes it so that when it is rotating, it doesn't like change directions and it will only follow the one line like that. So if we were to input uh, the time value like hashtag frame divided by, what should it be divided by? Maybe 50. If we do that, we could see it's moving pretty well. But let's uh, turn up the amount of light rays. That seems pretty good. We might have to edit the shader a little bit because it seems a tad strong. But yeah, it's now rotating fairly well. We could just reduce this to hashtag frame divided by 30. There we go, much better. So yeah, let's go back into the shader editor and just move this over a bit to make it look more like a light ray. Let's turn up the emission so that we get more glare going. And one more thing, I forgot this, but we could change the scale for each of these rays randomly by going over to here, adding a float random value node right here, hooking this into the scale. As we could see, let, let's bump this up to 0.5 we get rays of random scales as well. So we could crank this up by quite a bit more. And there we go, you now have light rays moving in every which direction. Let's see, let's go into the shader editor. Of course, this is pretty customizable. Here, let me organize these nodes by a little bit. Always keep your nodes organized in a very nice fashion. It helps a lot, especially if you're bringing this into other projects. We could change this to orange. The gradient is still looking a bit off. So I'll just bring this over to here and maybe raise this by a little bit. There we go. That's looking better. And we could change this to like a red color or a blue color. I think that looks pretty good. But yeah, that's basically the entire effect. Let's see. Anything else? Um, if you want to avoid, like I'm not sure if you're seeing this on the, uh, on the video playback. But some of these are extremely thin, and they will be every time they rotate. So maybe just uh, increase the axis on the Y by 0.1. And I'll just make it so that they don't quite rotate in the same place every single time. All right, I think that's pretty good. Uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, check out my Twitter account, my Gumroad account, my Instagram account. And yeah, I will see you in the next tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this one.